I just, you know, what really surprises me now is that so many people like know my face. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't he though? Yeah, but you don't be, I don't be feeling like that. I be thinking like, I know people see my shit and see my content, but I don't be feeling like I'm gonna walk in a room and something like, well, I'm gonna like, I know you. And I'm mm. just standing like, how? And then you really got it on your phone. Like, this is you. Did You're you, crazy. Do you think you did it? Um, I mean, of course not on purpose, but like after the first one, was it like more intentional to like just go on podcasts, podcasts and pop your shit? No, that's the funny part is like I really just wanted to take a moment and make people as familiar as possible with my face. Mm. You know what I mean? Whether, whether I said something or not, even with the travel shit. Just think about it, even the travel videos go viral. It's not yeah, just one thing. Yeah. So it's like it gets to a point where my brand awareness is so strong that when I roll out my product-based businesses and I roll out e-com and my business, people respect it that much more and trust it that much more because they've seen me so many damn times. But it got to be a, a way that, like, I'm sorry, it got to be a way where, like, I guess if you bought, like a rapper, right, when they about to drop a pro project, yeah. all of a sudden some bullshit come out. Like, <laughs> it got to be, like, enticing or, like, more encouraging to be like, man, I really went crazy on this podcast run or just... Me talking to my shit or even traveling. So when you about to drop something, like, I'm about to just go crazy. No, because I never, like, dropped something. I stayed consistent. I just stayed consistent. And I was going to stand 10 toes down on my views regardless. Like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because somebody um, somebody asked me about the Kevin Samuels thing, and then they asked about the 100K thing. And then they were like, so, like, what? He was like, how were you, like, before you made money? I was like, I, I was like, do you not know my story? Like, I moved out for a man that told me he was going to pay all the bills. This mm. has never changed. Like, it's always been, like... Oh, you're gonna pay the bills. Okay, mm. I'm gonna come. And now it's just okay. In the event that he can't pay the bills, I'm fine. But even like they were like, "Well, what about your parents?" I'm like, uh, "My mom was a mom. My dad paid bills." Mm. Was but if it, like here? right now though. I mean, now that the the love is there, hypothetically, if anything changed, because your man right now pay all the bills. If if he fell off tomorrow, would I, bro? If he fell off, if he fell off at nine a.m., he would be back up by twelve noon, and nobody would know. Like, from you or from, from me? Who? We've been together. But am I gonna pick up Joe on the street and take him to six figures? No. For the people that 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 probably don't understand that, if they was to see that and found out your man ain't have a uh, a job or whatever and wasn't paying the bills and you was paying all the bills, that wouldn't be that wouldn't look like a because hypocrite. Gonna, but he would get back up. Like he's just that type of man. Like I wasn't gonna date somebody that I had to worry about them standing back up. No, I, but what if it took him some time? Like six it's months. It's not gonna take him no time. That's what if, not the what type if it of took man. him? That's what if not it the took type of man I date though. I but don't what date if it those took type him of six men. If it could, anything could you happen. You always get twelve months. You always get twelve months. I'm always gonna give somebody tw twelve months is more than enough time. Yeah, to stand I think back that's fair. Up. I think that's fair. But but wait, so you would leave after twelve months though? I think twelve months is fair. Leave? Yeah. I feel like the respect would be gone. It would be gone. He would want to leave because my mouth is going to get so bad, bro. Like, Wait, I, what? Because I get so irritated. Like, I can't. So because he pay all the bills, you don't get irritated? What do I got to be irritated about? Let's start this podcast. Yo, <laughs> what's poppin'? You know what time it is, your boy, Mr. J Hill. J Hill Podcast, our special guest in the building. Uh, she is like a friend of the show now. We got to start doing that, uh, Dylan. <laughs> friend of the show, Christiana Hurt is in the building. How you feeling? You know me, up and at it. Yes, sir, <laughs> Yo, so um, finish the conversation. So you don't you don't get irritated. First, you're a woman. <laughs> you have menstrual cycles, and I could people can hate me. I don't care. And you're a woman. Like <laughs> you don't get irritated. What do I got to be irritated if all my bills are paid and food is in the fridge? Like honestly, but again, I'm coming from a household where dad did work long nights, and dad, you know, wasn't there every damn day. He was working, and I respected that as a child, and I was explained it as a child so as an adult because somebody else was like you're so understanding i was like no it's just all i've ever known mm. is like he's out working for you like he's doing all these things to so that you can do the things that you want to do you know what i mean like there's nothing i can't send him that he's gonna say no mm. like for example i want to go on an antarctica cruise it's 18 bands a person mm. there is no like we can't do that it's just like okay when so it's planned for so. that's what i was gonna ask like i'm glad you said that though because like you're not as crazy <laughs> You're not as crazy as you look on the gram. <laughs> but I just like, because like, come on, bro. Like 18 bands a person. All right, come on, let's go. Like, nah. But I'm glad you said we plan for it. No, we plan for it. It's not like, we. I don't be expecting him to take me. Like, if I ask on Monday, I'm not looking for Tuesday. But it's, you need to know, like, when am I getting this? And How? as long as you give me that timeline, I'm cool. What's the timeline? <laughs> for Antarctica, February 2024. And I came up with the idea, like, two months ago. So... Cause the penguins don't come out till February, so I gotta go. Hey, bro. We 
here in 2023 and you can't come up with 40 bands for my penguin trip? Boy, some people can't come up with 40 bands in a year. Fuck you I don't take those people. So that's not my life. Just like they always talking about like, oh, the only top 3% of people. Like I only know the 3%. That's where I live. That's the only people I know. I don't care about the 97% because that's not my reality. People need to stay in their realities. It's like, true. It's true. So how much you bring in? To the penguin trip? Mm-mm. I guess in general. Are you top 3%? Yeah. Like What's top three percent? Top three percent. I think right now is only over six figures. I think we'd have to pull up some statistics. Six figures. I think because I'm thinking like, like six figures. You still can't afford just forty bands. But I think when you go on statistics, like on the internet, I think three percent is like six figures right now. There's if you no go by way. south, because Florida is, I think top one percent. Don't fine. quote me on this, but I think Florida's top one percent. I think you have to be over like seven hundred grand. And I'm clearing, I'm netting over seven figures right now, like for my 2022 tax return. Mm. Damn. Yeah, no, nah, I don't think I'm doing um, seven figures. That's six figures for sure, but. No, I'm at seven, like on my tax return, which is, I feel like so many people don't ever want to claim that, but you can't get houses or anything real without like really claiming that income and actually paying the IRS, which sucks, but it's life. Like, what am I going to do? Yeah, we should sponsor my podcast, all this money you got. You want to put my logo somewhere? Yeah, put you can put all this <laughs> put right the here. software yeah. logo. We can, we, can move, we can move all this out the way. Yeah. Yeah. Do I get a little like a thanks to our yeah. sponsors? Clip? Yeah, you get all that. <laughs> you feel me? Just come in with the right number. It's pretty cool. It should be hey, not for you. If your audience wants to be interested in Celsi, because you know I got a software company. What is that about? So Celsi allows people to find cheap products and groceries in their local area and do cart comparison. So, like, say you buy, like, 100 items at Publix and it came out to 250 it would show you what the cost of those items would be at Kroger or Aldi or Whole Foods. You can compare the entire cart. Why wouldn't nobody, why wouldn't somebody want to be a person? I don't know. <laughs> I don't like, know. That's crazy. You know, I came up with the idea, so I'm biased, but. How, how long ago you had this? You started this? I started this? it uh, January of 2023. I completed it October 1st. Yo, wait, hold up, hold up. Explain this entrepreneurship shit to me, because I feel like a lot of people don't really understand the, not even pressure, but how hard it is. To do software? Just entrepreneurship in general. Because when we first did the interview, you was doing candles. Yeah, those were too heavy. I had to put those down. Wow. Because they were too heavy to ship. I couldn't do eight figures with it. Margins are everything. So I still sell kids clothes. My margins are great on that. I still sell classes and courses that my margins are great on that ebooks all that and then my software again the margins are great and then i buy um houses under 70k mm-hmm. and put section 8 tenants on them and again the margins are great i'm all about my net i heard profit. section 8 is not good they're like like they mess up your your property no you are picking bad tenants mm. why would you let somebody in with like two felonies and a 400 credit score into your house but i mean it's section 8 i mean who who's on section 8 with what 97 percent of america everybody's in a recession what, an 800 credit score? Not an 800, but, you know, a nurse, single mom with three kids and a 640 is going to destroy your house. No. Nah. Ain't going to move. Don't try to ask me like that. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> really think about it. A single mom of two that's a nurse at night, an RN with a, six, let's just say, 620 credit score. You think that's a bad person to have in a home? Nah. And honestly, keep it all the way home. With no criminal background, no issues, of course, they're not going to destroy it. But, but, yes, if you go pick up somebody with two felonies... 400 credit score, can't even, get, can't even get approved for a box of pizza. Yes, you do have something to worry about. I ain't going to lie to you. I just feel like even that is it's hard to judge because you can you could just fall to hard times. Like, it's, it's hard out here. You, you have but a bad... But you're not going to have criminal history. You're going to have... Bro, ref- I got a criminal history. You keep trying to be judgmental. Ref- but you can have reference. I have to be judgmental. I'm a, a land... I'm an investor of a landlord. What do you mean I, ha- I have to be judgmental? Welcome to America. Oh, you are a terrible black person. I'm terrible because I want my house to stay my house. Like, I'm sorry. I have mouths to feed. And you think like, no, no, no. You, Donald Trump in the flesh. Like, yo, just go ahead and tell him like, fucking build the fence. Just go ahead. God damn. I'm sorry. Like, if if it's from a money perspective, no, I don't have sympathy for you and your bad credit score and your bad criminal history and your zero references. No, I don't. You need to find somebody with a heart. And when they tear up your property, don't call me. Mm. But me as a real investor, not a Mickey Mouse investor going and fixing doors. And no, I buy houses. I place tenants in them. I have property management. I never see the houses. I buy them unseen sometimes. Like, So how you know if you're making the right decision? 
FaceTime and good property management. Trust people to mm. be in a position to help you and pay them well. And you will never, it will never, never steer you wrong. Like, what do you mean? So, yeah, let's go back to this entrepreneurial conversation. Because for the people that don't know, I feel like you, like we was talking about it. You went on there like this 90 day run for real. <laughs> <laughs> you just, so everybody should know the story maybe. But what I will say is, damn, before I go into the entrepreneurship conversation, on that 90 day run, I think Wallow, you just saw Wallow yesterday yeah. at um, Afrotech. Afrotech. And he said something that could be looked at as true. And I think mm-hmm. he said, you told me that. Um, I'm known for snapping more than my business. Right. Which, yes, my snapping and my relationship preferences and the way that I speak on relationships or carry myself definitely had everybody like, who is this chick? Like mm-hmm. the audacity of her, like to feel like this and demand men make money, blah, blah, blah. And it crazy. it's crazy because it really opened the door to a lot of people having that conversation like mm-hmm. over and over and over again. But it also allowed me, as you click to find out who I am, it allows me to control the narrative to show you like, hey, I was evicted because of a man. I moved out under these pretenses and I had to do this. And, you know, all the things that kind of line up or how I grew up, like it allows you to be like, it kind of is, she's justified to have preferences once you get the context of it. Mm. And to allow people to get that context directly from me has been the biggest blessing in itself, honestly. Mm. How do you, how do you measure what platform helps you the most or does that even matter? I do what's called omnipresence. So I don't measure it per platform. I just measure it just overall my brand awareness. So Mm. like when you Google search me, there's tons and tons and tons, YouTube, tons and tons. And it really allows you to get to one, see that I'm consistent in everything that I do in my views and everything that I do in business, as well as just, again, that full picture. Mm. So you fall in love with the story and the person that I am because of a 15 second clip right because you just well, you're curious <clears throat> I, I, I ask those questions because even out it's some people who don't even have instagram right and it's some people who don't look at it but it's some people that might see the video first before they see instagram no of course but you're still gonna go to google you may yeah. go to tiktok you may go to linkedin you may i have all of those platforms but i say that because it was a few people like i've heard this a couple times i'm not lying that was like yo i really like um uh, christiana uh they didn't say your name because I don't think they knew. It was like people that I knew. Yeah. And they was like, yo, the girl, uh, the Chris, I, they said it wrong. Christina. Like, yeah, they was like the Christina, Christina. chick. I really like that. I really, I really like that interview. And I'm like, it showed me that clearly not everybody is getting getting introduced to you from Instagram because on that interview, we we was talking about some shit. Like, I think you introduced my audience to drop shipping. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like people just like, they, they fall in love with the brand and the story. And I've always been a person that, sells my story like Mm. myself like i'm the one that's gonna put it out like the 15 seconds just creates curiosity Mm, and that's a fact yo and we might not have that right now but i'm just really just chopping it up with you because like it's not like you like family to the show now in front of the show (laughs) but you what i don't understand is you coming from nah that's not true because i want to say you came from humble beginnings but you had a like your your family yeah, yeah your family was not well up but pretty good I went to high school in a Bentley. Yeah, but you fell into some hard times. Because of ego. Think about it. At the end of the day, like, I could go home and it's crazy because people will say that sometimes in the comments. And I have to ask everybody. I'm like, so say you were in my position. You're going to call mom and dad and ask them to come pick you up? No. I'm like, so don't expect me to. Because mm. all of us, if we're in a situation where it's like, damn, do I want to call them? You don't want to. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's some that will swallow their pride and do it. But for the majority... We're not wanting to call home with no, I told you so moment. Because right. my dad told me not to move out. Like, I just said this to somebody who, again, walks up to me like, I love your story, da-da-da-da. And I was like, he was like, I just want to follow in your footsteps. I was like, I wouldn't ask you to walk through hell barefoot to mm. follow my footsteps. Like, what I went through and what I put myself into, some people would definitely look at trauma, torture. There's so many, like, harsh words to use for that. And it's a blessing that, you know, I came out the way that I did and I, I'm a you know, the person I am today, but to look at that as inspiration, I always tell people like my desperation is somebody else's inspiration. Mm. But in the moment that I was in it, you think I would have wanted somebody telling me like, this is great. Like that was not great. That was not something to idolize. It was really survival. I got into entrepreneurship out of survival and not wanting to swallow my pride of a situation that I was told not to put myself into. So, but that, that go that gives me to the uh, conversation or the question 
you falling into hard times, coming from some pretty decent times. I don't want to say great because depending on yeah. who you who's watching, but coming from like two parent household, your, your your parents was there. They they took care of you. You went to prom in a Bentley, right? <laughs> coming from that and falling on hard times, how do you come out of that so arrogant, for lack of better words? Like, cause you do boast about like, nah, nigga gonna pay all the bills. I'm not dealing with this. This, 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 I don't understand that. So it's not even arrogance. It's just at some point you have to understand like, no, I'm, I'm worth more than this. Like, and mm. it's crazy because a boy was the one that really put it into perspective. I had met a guy in Miami and at this time I, I had just, I had been living in Miami maybe a couple months, whatever the case may be. I was allowing, I feel like a lot of just shit that I didn't need to. And I'll never forget. He had taken me out on maybe our second or third date and I had booked an Uber X and he canceled it. He was like, no, black trucks only. He was like, girls like you, he was like that bring X, Y, Z to the table. He was like, you need to set the president and never, ever, ever settle again because people will do it. Mm. And I started from, that was in 2020. And I just started, I'm like, no, I don't do that. No, I'm not doing that. And I just stood on it. I didn't come down. I didn't, nothing. And people have always just matched the standard. Yo, you know, it's it's crazy because I wish, I wish that part could go viral, which wouldn't, (laughs) would never probably. But I wish that is the part that people could see because it's it's a lot to learn in, in that. A lot it's of just sometimes, and it's crazy because um, I had somebody, somebody that I had known like a couple years that would always tell me like, I see potential in you that you just don't see. Mm. Like you, and I always tell people that like sometimes friendships, like you can look in the mirror a thousand times and you'll never, ever be able to see what other people see, but it takes somebody else just looking at you and be like, you're just so much more than you even realize. Mm. And once I kind of like really got that drilled into my head from somebody that I felt like was just doing life, like living it. It was like, you know what? You're right. Like, I'm not going to settle for somebody, you know, just treating me like I'm just nobody. But, and, but I was going to say, like, you kind of got fortunate because I was talking to the guy, Ash Cash, shout out to my guy. And he was just saying, like, I was saying, like, sometimes I suffer from, like, uh, like um, survivor's guilt. Right. And yeah. he was like, he was like, basically, like, OK, like, I, I do good. Right. But I'm not going to give it back. And what he said was, like, what's going to happen is if you, if you think about the struggle too much, then the universe will start being like, okay, that's what you want. So I'm going to yeah, give you that. Like, and the same, with, <laughs> like, the same with, like, with the guys, like, because if you didn't have him, eventually, if you don't see yourself as top tier, only can date these type of people or however. What, You're going to keep getting it's the same situation I got myself into. Exactly. TV and evictions because I was putting myself and I didn't see it. I didn't mm. see it. And it took somebody like, no, like, stand on what you deserve, stand on what you want. And don't come down and don't let anybody convince you out of that. So I just didn't. And that, this is me at like 23. Mm. So I was like, okay. And I just stayed there. Like from that point on, and I'm 28 now, like relationships have been peaceful. I don't have DV. I don't even have somebody raise their voice at me because now if somebody does get a little bit aggressive, I just stop it right there. Like I don't tolerate this. I'm leaving. Mm. Like, and I and don't that's like, that's, issues. that's this next level, like self-love. Yeah, and I feel like people always misconstrued that of like, oh, self-love and healing, you're going to be alone forever. It's like, no, just make people stand on what they say. And when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Mm. Like, don't waste months upon months upon months thinking somebody's going to change. I give people 30 days because the before my relationship with OP, um, I, had, I had been dating, obviously. And the guy was just not, he was just not what I needed. And I just flat out, I was like, you got 30 days to dig your head out your ass or I'm out of here. That mm. 30 days came, left. Mm. Like, because otherwise it would have been months. Months would have turned into years. This is like, like, like I said, like. I hate to be that person. No, but you gotta be, bro. But no, 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 no. Like, this is so dope because on the other side of that Instagram chick that people see, right? <laughs> like, no, I'm just being real. On the other side, of it, it's a lot of sense there. Like a lot of times people see it on the ground, like, man, that's retarded. Like, you no. deserve that. Yeah, but it's like... it's so like, bro, that you're talking about loving yourself. And so many times, like, even in relationships, long-term relationships, you 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 in a relationship and you and you try to and you stay because of the love, or you stay because of some history. Thing, history. That exactly. Is the biggest, oh, the biggest L I had on and off. Cause he knew me in high school, just kept allowing and they, things. And they be the people that hurt you the worst. And it's crazy because um, most. I said this OP because you know, like we obviously have conversations, and it was just like I uh, finally it came up of like, why would you never go back to that person? I'm like, because that person will never respect me the way that a new guy would, or mm. you, or anybody would, because he's known me so long, he's so comfortable, and I've always been there. It's oh, I can just give her bubble gum, and she's gonna be okay with yeah. it. Yeah. Now some like, people can um, never see. 
can never see past who they met you at. They can never see the growth. That's another thing. Like, you met me at 13, and you think, oh, well, I can just blow her off. She'll be there. Like, no, bro, I'm good. Like, mm. I'm good. It doesn't mean I don't have love for you. It doesn't mean I don't respect you and our, our history. It just means for a relationship and where I am, I'm not tolerating it. Yo, how important do you think that is for other women to even see the value in themselves to to start moving like that? It was that? such a big issue. And I, I was there, so I can't even, like, speak too much of, like, oh, like, it's just, and I hate it when people get stuck in it over 25. Because mm. that's where it's like you get stuck, I feel like. I'm really glad that somebody did me as dirty as I wa- was, as young as I was. Because mm. I was able to get angry, grieve it, and then be okay with it. You know what I mean? Because that's really what happened. Like, I came out, I got evicted in 2017. And of course it was, I hate everybody, take over the world. And yes, I poured that into business instead of like, going and being promiscuous that was cool but for i would say probably like a good two years almost, yeah till 2020 it was like anti-men i hate everybody it was just that anger because you're so mad about how this person did you especially when you pour that much into a person mm. to then like 2020 calming down allowing people to take me out do nice things for me and then meeting people that are like you just deserve so much more and believing it because i saw myself so low Mm. to then it's just like now it's like relationship people always like oh you guys you guys don't fight i'm like about what what do i have to fight about i mean i could think of one thing like what like sometimes the confidence right and the love for yourself could possibly be misinterpreted for arrogance 100 percent. um misinterpreted for thinking you're better than people right not saying that it is but sometimes you're not going you're not allowing things to affect you or hurt you that other people would. And sometimes it could feel like, man, well, I'm willing to do this for you and you're not willing to do that for me. You're not willing to re- reciprocate that. And it's like, not really. It's just, I'm not willing to put myself in a bind or a hole like you might be. So my first day with OP, I and I was doing this on all dates prior to him, but like his, his date is the reason that we ended up staying together. Every single day I asked people the same three questions and then I made them take a love language quiz on the date on the first date Mm -hmm. because I wanted to make sure that I understood how they perceived love and what they would need to feel like you know what I mean I love them you know what I mean because sometimes you can feel like I come off cold or I don't care or arrogance because I'm not giving you what you need as like your love language you know what I mean whether it's acts of service love or um words of affirmation or gifts so like the relationships that failed in the past, I always noticed that either the love language was the same as mine. So I wasn't able to like give it because I was always expecting it maybe. Damn. Um, To then understanding exactly what my partner needs to feel like supported or feel like I'm, you know, hearing his voice and things like that. To That's why we we're still together. Because I was getting into a lot of first dates and it would be like acts of service and gifts. And I'm sitting here like, been there, did that. We're going to get in a gift war. Like we, I've been in a situation where it was just literally a gift war to the point that gifts didn't have the same effect as they would like normally because you're always expecting it. Like, oh, I know it's Friday. He's going to buy something like and then I'm buying something because you bought something mm. and it's back and forth. But we're not receiving it as a genuine. It's just becoming like stupid. That's I, I would think that if it's the same, then it it's would be easier to love somebody because dark. I feel like you get numb to it and you just like. It doesn't become like fun. It just becomes like outside of materialistic things, though, right? Let's say if it's words of words of affirmation. Could you ever get tired of it, though? Like neither one. That's, that's not my love language, though. Mm. That's OPs. I will give him that. Definitely, he likes words of affirmation and acts of service. Mine is acts of service. Mm. So like somebody like doing things constantly for me makes me happy. I'm cool, but that's why paying the bills and carrying the house makes me happy because I feel like. But clearly, service. the last one, right? Didn't. It got to you be about the gift thing. Yeah, it got to be because that's still yes, acts of service, gifts, right? No, no, no. Gift giving is like literally like I bought you this. Mm. Acts of service is like you see me carrying groceries and you stop what you're doing and you carry the groceries. Okay, like you know what I mean. Like yeah, yeah. acts of service is like doing like an act, like finishing the laundry because you see that I'm sick. Mm. Shit like that has always been like my like calming because I feel like I'm being helped. I feel mm. like you're taking weight off my shoulders. So. Because words of affirmation isn't yours, you don't ever find that hard to do it because, like, unconsciously, you're not doing it because that's not what you look mm. for. Because I'm aware of it. I've been aware of it since day one. So I know to send texts when he's working. I know to make dinner before he gets home. I know, like, I know, 
Like, I know what needs to be done before he gets there. So I just mm. do it. Like, I know when he's not with me to send a text. Like, or if he's like, for example, when he came to Atlanta and he was working and stuff, I made like a um, Halloween basket and then like got like cologne and stuff and then like wrote a note. Mm. Like, you just do random shit. It makes people mm. feel appreciated. That's kind of like an act of service, though. That's kind of yeah. like. I just write like long notes, I guess. I, I like that. That's, bro, that's it, bro. It's so much to learn from you <laughs> through the BS. So I'm just saying that's kind of cool. Like, but anyway, I was saying before I get to, I'm, I'm gonna go to the entrepreneurial conversation. I swear, <laughs> but it's crazy because like we we think people are crazy, right? Let's say the the Instagram chick that's that's shallow and that don't care about nothing Instagram but likes. Chicks that won't date broke men. No, not even you. <laughs> not, not 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 even you. I'm painting a picture. Like let's say this Instagram chick that show her body all the time, right? She's shallow. She she super materialistic, right? She only want want to date ballers, right? Let's just say that chick. Essentially, she's going to be able to trick herself in that position. That's why it happens so many times. Like so, regular people like me or like my friends, we look at it like, man, why do niggas keep falling for these chicks? When when realistically, she's just loving herself enough to fall into that situation over and over again because she's going to put herself in a position. Like, she's going to do things she's that... She's going to put herself in the right room. Yeah, she's going to do things that your average chick would never do because th they don't deem it as that important. Facts. But imagine if more people felt that way about everything. Let's say somebody felt that way about not being broke. They would never be and broke. That's why capitalism is so real. It's like, this mm. is what it is. Like, it's just capitalism. People can argue all day, but like... At the end of the day, if we give 100 people $100,000, three would probably keep it. Facts. Like, it's just what it is. Like, it has nothing to do with opportunity. Money. It's just either. It's, I say it with content, too. Like, either you have it or you don't. Mm. You'll see people put out a piece of content where you'll see, like, this was a great idea, but it just wasn't. It, it. hit. And then you'll see somebody else do something. And you're like, oh, so creative. Like, you either got it or you don't. And I personally really feel like I'm just... I'm the it girl. Like I've always been, and it's crazy because right now I've been I've been telling people, and if you're watching this, I got a thousand dollars if you could find. I was on the Tony Danza show May 9th, two thousand five, episode one forty six, two thousand five. We do, we didn't have CDs. It was VHS. That episode, I'm paying a thousand dollars if you could find it mm. because I was on TV a lot as a child, and it's crazy because my my clips and just everything. I was just a fan favorite. And now as an adult, I'm like, I just always had that it factor. Nobody had to teach me. Nobody had to, I was just good and well-spoken mm. to, it's just like, damn, like now when I create content or I come up with ideas, people really just turn their heads. Like, how did you even find that? It's, it just comes to me. No, nah, I, feel, I, I, feel, I feel the same way. It's funny that you said that because like I, I, I'm always. You'll have, see stuff that's forced and then you'll see stuff bro, that's like. I have my, I swear, like <laughs> even our conversation, like nothing. You even knew it. Like, it wasn't like, no, I prepared for my interviews for, for the most part, right? But yours, like, I think at that time, you didn't, this is before the 90s. I think you only had um, finesse shit. Yeah, I only have finesse. Yeah, so like, it wasn't nothing to prepare for. It was just like, let's do it. And boom. But I say that to say, because I've I had my eye open to a lot of podcasts, right? And I'd be seeing things and I'm like, yo, this is fire. Why is this not, like, why is that not lit? Or why did that blow up? But like you said, like, sometimes it's, it's just, just a the person. Factor. And yeah. it's not even appearance. It's just sometimes like, I don't know, like, it's nah. just like my lives. Like, people, like, somebody asked me today, like, how do you have so many leads? How many, so many people um, asking about e -com when you just sit on live and do your hair? And I'm like, I couldn't even tell you. Like, mm. I, I've been going live so long since I've, even Facebook. I was going Facebook live before we had Instagram live. Like, people were just so in tune to me and could sit there for hours. It's like NPC. Like, mm. you'll find yourself just watching me for an hour. And I can't explain it because I'm the one just going so through the, the motions. That's going to the entrepreneurship stuff. I feel like so many entrepreneurs nowadays make it seem so easy. But like, um, just again, of course, you know the, the analytics and the, and, and the why. But like for me, I'm like, okay, I seen I seen you was pushing the uh, drop shipping. I seen you was pushing the candles. Now it's something else. But for me, I look at it like that just shows how intentional you have to be when it comes to entrepreneurship. Well, 100%. You got to wake up every day and just... Again, like people speak consistency, but when you break down consistency, I always tell people like, what did you wake up today and did you do 10 things that were going to produce you some type of income? Mm. Like what 10 things did you do? Like, did you go live? Did you send an email? Did you call cold call? Like I wake up and I do 10 things every damn day. Like mm. whether it's going live, emailing, cold messaging, um, just begging like at this point. Like some people will be like, how did you get this? I'm like, I just kept emailing them. Like Thanks. just begging, like. What are, what what do you think are the top three things that you do that 
I don't want to say guarantee because nothing to guarantee, but like a 80 to 90% chance of making you money if you do it every single day. Me in the position I am in today, mm -hmm. going live for mm -hmm. sure. Um, skits, like making my skits, which is so crazy because my skits are always a reflection of how I'm feeling. What skit though? So for example, um, I'm going to play it later, but um, you know the video, you remember the song Inside Out? And you remember, bing bong, we yeah, yeah, did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That whole scene, I redid it and I did like, I changed my jacket in it and it was like, go Riley, go. And I put it as okay. the person I was when I started entrepreneurship to the person I am successful because I lost that person. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it's so sad when you look back like, where are you? Like, where's the person that just was so, you know, before the trauma or the L's and all that, like, where's that person? But I I had to leave that person behind to be the person I am today. Mm. And it was like, that's really how I felt. Like when I watched that scene and you're, you're looking at something from your childhood or something when you first started something, the innocence and the happiness. And then like you go through all the L's and the ups and downs to we did it. We did it. Where are you? And it's like, damn, that person's gone. Mm. Like, it's like. It just moves you. Or the social media entrepreneurship versus real life. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I'd be looking, obviously, I'd be looking crazy in real life when I'm working 18 hour days, but then I'll get on the internet and I'm dolled up, like picture perfect. It's like, that's real shit. Like, mm. this shit's not a game. Damn, that's crazy. Now, it, so knowing that you gotta be so consistent and, and intentional when it comes to this entrepreneurship stuff, what do you think is the hardest part of it? People be looking for motivation and don't know how to look in the mirror. Like, you Facts. know what I mean? They be looking everywhere Come on, man. else. But, but the they mirror. don't look in the mirror. Like, I, I hate that question. Like, how do you stay motivated? And I'm Nigga, like, me? Fuck is you talking about? What do you about? mean? Like, <laughs> Facts. What the fuck? Like, how do you not see? Like, bro, I don't know. If I see something, like, it's, they should have never gave me TikTok. Because if I see something, I'm like, I'm going to do that. Mm. And I look it up or I image reverse it. And I'm like, I see how much it costs. And I just reverse engineer it like okay i need to sell this or do this and we're gonna go mm. like now nowadays my only issue is like how i'm gonna stick it into as much time as i can because there's don't we have time to be going to 30 countries but bro i just reverse engineer if i see something i do it like that's just it like, damn that's crazy yo this is this, this is so like i feel like this conversation is different because I, i'm actually like i've seen it's crazy right? growth yeah, yeah but then like just talking to you about behind the the things that go viral all the time it's just super interesting to to to, to, to see the thought process behind it though it just blows my mind sometimes how i took a i ain't dating a 100k man to oh you travel the world with your man that's so cool in the pool video like i made 16 grand off a pool up my man pushed me in the pool mm. to then like the waterfall but viola davis posted my travel content, Viola Davis. Yeah, no, that's like, crazy. How did I get noticed? You know what I mean? Like now, it really, really shows me. Like they know exactly who you are. Like when you walk in a room, like they know who you are, and that's a cool feeling at the same time. But it also lets me know that I really need to. When I get the opportunity to explain myself, I gotta explain it. Mm. Like you know what I mean? I gotta tell people. Like, like Walla, perfect example. Like let me. I take my five minutes and I just speed through it. Like mm. just like that. Like. Like, I got evicted. I'm doing this. I have this. You know, I've been, I got Forbes next 1000, Forbes 30 under 30. Like, I've really gotten out of my my own mistakes. You know, everybody talks about make your bed and you lay in it. But I made my bed and got the fuck out. No, you know what I mean? Like, I got out and I, I just couldn't be more, like, content with that feeling alone that now, like, the people around me. Because, you know, at this level, you start to get employees and staff. And I see them that haven't gotten that, you know, that spotlight in a sense. And I'm okay with just... You know, walk for the cook funnel award. Walk, like collect the clout. Like I'm cool because I've I've done it all. You know what I mean? Like I'm mm. chilling. Like now I'm just in a place where net profit is my only focus. Nah, <laughs> but um, it's just like now it's just ch life on easy mode. I tell people all the time. Like I live life life on easy mode because God giving His battles to the toughest soldiers. I done lived that, and I'm never going back to war, bro. Nah. Never getting drafted again. But um. Nah, yeah, I, I I definitely wish you the best. But and again, like I was asking about even like when when you know you you having something coming out. But as far as the traveling, you don't travel differently now because because of the success from it. Like you don't look for things to do for people to be like, wow. No, <laughs> that's hard to believe. Like, so let me explain the context. This is another context one. So I had a miscarriage in 2018. Mm -hmm. I was in the hospital for 10 days, lost too much blood, went into shock, et cetera, et cetera. 
those moments because there was a point like and I was again angry you gotta think this is coming I had my miscarriage in 2018 I was evicted in 2017 so I had this high of income mm -hmm. and then like God just tumbled the fuck out of me so there was like obviously hours of time where I was in the room by myself finally but it was just that moment of laying in that bed and like seeing my belly pregnant and knowing nothing was in there was just like life changing. Like it was really just that moment of like death was like really knocking at the door. And then plus like everybody rushing in before my C-section and my C-section taking like four and a half hours and C-sections were not supposed to be that long. Right. I remember that. So um, it was just that moment of like fear just leaving my body when I woke up from my C-section that now when I travel, I do things to try to get as close to that feeling as possible, which is probably dark. And a therapist, if you're watching this, you're probably going to tell me you need to go to therapy. But it's just what I, where I am at this point. Like, I've lost that sense of fear of death or, like, the unknown because I got so close to it. So now it's just like, oh, jump off a cliff? Okay. Like, what's the worst that can happen? I've been there. You know what I mean? Like, I always just tell people, like, when you've danced with death for real, you're not going to fear it. Like... In the sense, you're just kind of like, I don't know. I don't want to say numb, but I just climbing on a plane. Okay. But not even just the death part, though. I'm thinking about um, the part of just doing something that's going to be attention grabbing for the masses. I you do, just do it because do there's it, no fear. I do it for that sick ass feeling, which is probably dark. Mm. You think my man wanted to get on a picnic? <laughs> yeah. I asked him in March and we did it in July. Um, he was against jumping off the cliff. But once he saw me jump the day before, he was okay with it. Which mm. you know, maybe it's maybe it's seeing me and like seeing me not hesitate. It just was like okay, I can do it with you. But I don't know. For me, so you don't be scared at all, not one bit. No, I'd be trying to swim with whales. I'd be trying to like I like ever since I started swimming with whales, that has been a sick obsession. That like I don't know if it's I don't know if it's because I'm a water sign, but being in the water and the ocean, best feeling and most calm i've ever felt in my life like now i've got this obsession let me, with it. let me ask you this i'm just curious for the people who might can't because the things you're doing is super expensive mm -mm. bro you just told me about the trip eighteen thousand dollars a piece please miss me but that's antarctica who's going to antarctica you are so i'm asking <laughs> you right the things that you're doing is clearly super expensive for the person that might not have it all but might have a little bit right what would you suggest for them to do for them to f get a feeling close to, to yours? the adventure because i'm what with the type of travel i'm considered is adventure mm -hmm. or panoramic where you do a bunch of countries at once so the different the differentiation between my trips and maybe like your budget travelers is just the hotels okay just the hotels i don't do hostels i don't do shared i don't we stay at hotels where we feel safe mm. that's my preference that's his preference like of course, we've had a couple hotels where it's very sideways, but that's that's all you have in that country. You know what I mean? Like we've slept on the top of a volcano. Um, we've gotten stranded in Peru. Like we've done mad shit where it's like, fuck it. Like this is where we're at. But even Peru, I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. It's, that just sounds expensive. But for somebody that don't Peru have it. It was like four grand for two people for seven days. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> okay 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 like i'm not gonna say not all like all countries are like you know budgeted but we did we did four countries 18 days for 21 grand mm. and that include food and alcohol like so if somebody wants to do these things they can do it yeah and i leak all my price transparency the hotels i leak all that like, nah bro because i, I looked at the one hotel Which and hotel? you got me fucked up bro. Which hotel? The one with the aquarium in it? Of course. That's Dubai. That's I an expensive even, I country. Didn't, I didn't know no better. I was just like, I'm just looking like, bro, I want this. But Yeah, it was 13 bands. I was only there for one night. That's what I'm about to say, a night though. If it makes you feel better, I didn't have sex in that room because I had met OP the 14th and I was there the 18th. So like, it was a thought in my head to like bring this random man that I was vibing with. But I was like, no, standards, bitch, you're not a sugar mama. So I was actually there with my staff celebrating like, you know, a 300K month and shit, but I I was just there for vibes. I didn't have sex. I didn't have nothing. I was just, he's on FaceTime in most of the videos. That's the funny part. Yeah, 13 bands for a month. I, but that, that was dope, though. That was probably one of my best. That was best. one of my childhood dreams, though, because those are rooms you see as a kid on, yeah. on freaking TV. I've never seen that on TV. That was my first time seeing oh, it. Oh, I saw it on Discovery Channel. Never. I never even cared to watch the, uh, never. What wasn't that Discovery? No, oh, that was that's Disney. Disney. No, See, I don't Discovery know. Channel. See, that I was clearly huge, don't know. I, I can this. actually line up all my all my childhood dreams was the underwater hotel, Petra in Jordan, 
I was like fiending to get up there. And you said that was where Jesus was born? <laughs> yes, I fucked up. That was Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even... <laughs> but fucking... Um... Yo, y'all letting a girl talk that don't want to date guys that... <laughs> That for what under hundred k <laughs> don't even know where Jesus is born. That's her, but it's okay. But yeah, but I wanted to go to Petra. That was like a huge thing for me. That was amazing because I stood on top of like a national monument, like which was super, super. I don't want to say illegal. I'm gonna say frowned upon. Mm. Um, did that and then swimming with the whale sharks. That was like crazy. And then swimming with jellyfish. Wait, why are you not vlogging? I know everybody says that. They're like, why not? That's how you know I don't do it for. Content, I just do it because I want to be there. I'm just happy to be there. You think if you started vlogging, it probably be, it'd probably be like too I, much? I feel like work. it would take out, like, my happiness of it. Mm. Like, I really just be... Because people be asking him to do it, too. Like, you guys need a couple's channel? And I was like, I feel like I would hate to travel because you're making... I'm on camera so much and I'm working so much. I don't want my vacation to be a vlog. No, that makes sense. No. We're thinking about doing it for... We're doing, like, a 30-day Europe tour. We were thinking about just doing the Europe stuff, but... I was like, where are we going to find a cameraman with that type of turnaround of editing? Wait, what you mean? How, how soon would you need it? He with us. You got to... Oh, y'all going to pay for him? Yeah, but how are you going to... You going to edit, climb mountains, like, film? You would need it the next day? I mean, per country... You would want to put out the country you left before you leave the new country. I mean, two days not bad. A day. That We're taking a 17-mile hike up a mountain, and you're going to tell me that some cameraman's going to haul up all that equipment, vlog it, edit it, and walk back down? Yeah, because you don't need too much equipment. You don't need... Bro, trust me. You don't need too much I just feel like I just picture a cameraman with like this backpack oh, nah, and nah, this, nah. this 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 stick nah. and then like passing out and nah. I was just looking at it. And him he like, could do it with uh he could probably um he could probably do it with like he got gear and shit. Again, where a cameraman walking 17 miles. I don't know. You could figure it out though. Shit, and watch a bunch of them are gonna message me like I can do it, but have never claimed you're not adding an elevation. You about altitude. to take them 30 countries. You gonna pay for it, right? Yeah. I think you can find a cameraman for that. That shit. has, but okay. So <laughs> let me put it in perspective. I'll be a cameraman. Fuck you talking about. <laughs> let me put it in perspective though. Again, like okay, so normally a cameraman's like a band, maybe fifteen hundred days. So let's say we pay thirty bands and we cover your travel. But what if you, for example, I'm doing the Austria ladder to heaven, but some people call it the ladder of death. Mm -hmm. It's literally like a tiny little ladder, and you climb it up free, like with the hook, and you walk, and you could die. You ex you think a cameraman gonna carry a camera behind me to focus on me and not die? Not for thirty thousand. That's what I mean. Like the stuff I'm doing, it'd be different if it was like a cute IG vlog. Like we're at restaurants and we're in a museum. They could just miss that one. Yeah, or they can give you what they can do is again they can give you they got glasses that record now. I don't know if you know that. Bro. They got glasses. They got the uh the GoPro. They can just give you the GoPro. They still can edit it. I don't up. want GoPro footage. Bro, it GoPro got some good ass footage, bro. I swear. Like 4K type shit. Bro, I'm going to show you this ladder when we cut and you tell me if you know a cameraman that's going to climb that shit. Niggas going to say they're going to do it, get out there and be like, Shit. I don't know about all that one. <laughs> nah, facts. Nah, man. But now nah, this is, yeah, I, I appreciate you pulling up, man. This is good, man. I'm, um, I did want to talk to you about the uh, podcast run, though. Just curious. What about it? That definitely helped the business. 100%. I wanted to, um, I was thinking about trying to do something like that for myself. Cause I feel like the only thing that they're... what's blocking me is like I'm not like too friendly. Like I don't really fuck with too many people. The so. thing is, cause people have asked you, it's crazy. Like some heavy hitters have hit me up about the whole run and how I did it. If I had a manager, I literally hit up all those podcasts myself. For real? I just went and typed in like podcasts or like just searched hashtags and I messaged all of them. I emailed all of them. You got to think like. Some of those times I was doing like three, four podcasts a day. Mm. Like I just did, I didn't care how tired I was. I didn't care where they were. I was flying to do, if I flew to Vegas, I was doing like three, four podcasts the same, like same day, same circuit. Just. And you and think I, it definitely was worth, like it was definitely I said the same it. thing on every single podcast. I did not change my script on a single podcast. It got to the point like people stopped wanting to come with me because they knew what I was going to say. But which ones, I guess, like not all of them hit, right? Like, I mean. They all hit in their own ways. Mm. Because you got to think SEO. And the same stuff being said, my name being used in the title, the same, same thing over and over and over and over again. To the point that it just caught fire every time when my name was mentioned. I think I'm going to do that, bro. I'm going to get it a try. I just you got to do like, it like 
hard though, bro. Like I did six months straight. Like you gotta go all in with this shit. Like Damn, and man. you can't turn down the little ones. I didn't turn down nothing. Mm. Like whether you had three viewers or three thousand, I was gonna pull up on you. Like I did not care. Cause think about Vanessa's podcast before I got on it. Yeah, no facts. Like, I had Vanessa on my show <laughs> before all of this, bro. That's like, my point. Like, uh, like, uh, like people come to me be like, bro, the first time I seen him was on your podcast, and I'm like, bro, I know. Like some of the like. Before I, bef bro, bro, he really turned up and like. You just got to stay consistent with it and you can't change your position no matter what people that's ask a fact. you. Like I, like, for example, I did one in New York. I can't think of the name, but it was about cheating. Mm. And I was like, when I cheat, it's an emotional thing. When a man cheats, he could cheat with a girl in the back of an Uber. Like it's going to be different. And they were arguing me down. And I was like, so you screw men that you don't know their name? Mm. Like you really doing that? Like stand on it, like on camera. Like you screw men, multiple men that you don't know. No, then you're. Not, it's not the same. Right? Men will literally screw a girl that they don't know at all. Like it's kind of disgusting. That's my point. But when people are like, oh well, I can have sex with no feelings. No, you can have sex with no feelings with somebody you know, somebody you you've been hanging out with, chatting it up for two and a half weeks on Facetime. You got a point. That's if definitely feeling. A man feelings. met a girl with a freaking Uber. And hit it off, and he get out the Uber. He he wouldn't be able to tell you nothing about the chick. Like it's just different. so you knowing that you would be okay with hmm? your man cheating. Cheating on me? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I wish he would. That's a hell of a bad investment because I'm gonna leave after all that. Ooh, a lot of money you spent. <laughs> Yo, you is no good. <laughs> like, you but wanna... you know, but you know what? A guy cheat with no emotion, so why leave him? It ain't nothing in it. You just, put a big ass spotlight. You know what kind of DMs I got after he's been posting me? But what that got to do? He cheating. There's no feelings involved. Why, why, why not? So go get another girl. Go. There's a billion of bitches. Why, why you need me? I say this all the time when people like hit me up from my past. Why are you worried about? There's a billion girls on this earth, but you worried about me. For what? You cheated. Go with her. Go with anybody. But there's no feelings. Why would I want to go with her? It's just something. That was just fun. To call your mother then. I don't know. Like... Your mom will still love you. I'm not. Like. <laughs> what my man uh, Toby said, Try we say, try Jesus, don't try me. Like, real shit, like, <laughs> I'm going to stay with you. Like, it's just real shit. Like, a woman is your investment. You can really tell, like, some men really put, they pour into their, their woman. My man has poured into me mm. a lot. So for him to cheat, you put me in a crazy position. One, I've been saving my money because mm. you pay all the bills. Two, you've been just... Put it, you just been pouring, 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 pouring into me. Not that I don't pour into you, but you're the one that cheated. So when I pull the cup and my cup is full and you sitting over there crying, your cup is empty because I done left. Like, what? You put all, you put, you exposed me to all of these people. All these people are now going to see like, damn, he cheated. I wouldn't do that. And you don't think I can't find one person on this big blue earth to not cheat. There's billions of people. You don't think one isn't going to do that? I don't need more than one. Mm. So I just, I really feel like if he cheated, you just put me in a really good fucking position. Mm. Like, if I cheat, I'm fucked. They're going to be like, this fucking whore. He did everything for her. And she did this. Bitches aren't shit. If I cheat, I'm fucked. I'm, I ain't going to be able to stand in the paint. But if he cheats, it's going to be poor Chris. Poor Christiana. She she's so good. Da -da -da -da. She's a woman with a bag. Da -da -da -da. Like, they don't love me. It like, sounds like you hoping he has been cheat. I hope he don't, bro. Because <laughs> the way I'm gonna play victim, it's gonna be bad. Oh, it's gonna. Be, I'm gonna. I, you know, I'll go on a podcast run. <laughs> Yo, another one. <laughs> like, I'm gonna be crying on the mic. Like you cheated after I cooked all day and I I tried my bro. Oh my gosh, bro. Oh, that's why. Let's not put that energy in the air, man. Let's not put that. He not. I ain't worried. Nah, man. Uh, one more time. Uh, the the businesses that you got going on now and selling my kids' clothes still. Just kidding, kids. My software, Celsi, C E L L Y C E, and then wealthy college kid. Mm. Same shit, different day. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I like this. This is good chemistry, man. Tell the people how to follow you. you guys can find me everywhere at this point. Facts. <laughs> um, Christiana Hurt or wealthy college kid, but chances are. You've seen me mm -hmm. like at this point. This is this is true. This is true. Well, man, I appreciate it, man. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. It's a wrap. We out.